Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel today. It's draft time, as is par for the course. For today's draft, we're going to be finding out if defense does in fact win championships, or if that is just a myth. So we're going to be drafting our two goalies first, and then our six defensemen. And last but not least, we move on to the forwards. It's one of those rare times that I remembered to randomize from play now, so that I have no input on this other than pressing the random button. So, let's find out what team we get. It is going to be the Winnipeg Jets. I'm pretty sure the Jets are on kind of a heater this year, which I did not see coming, but I'm here for it. Don't even think about touching my lines, jabroni. We're going to turn off Fog of War as well. Player morale, no. And CPU trades, we'll leave it on. Yeah, they can trade if they think it will help them, which it won't, because your Winnipeg Jets are taking home the Stanley Cup. I'm gonna hope we get a late pick, 29. Let's go with that. The <laughs> You're joking me! Wow, that would be sick. Too bad I can't do that. I pressed the wrong one. This is just going downhill so fast. I can't say no to 94 overall Andre Vasilevsky. So draft him as the first pick. I was gonna try to find someone on a good contract, but Sorokin, 90 overall, making four million. He's got three abilities. Both of our goalies are gonna be insane. Obviously, we now have to draft defensemen, and I believe I am gonna go with John Carlson because he does have an X factor. I still don't know. I say this every time if this weighs into the simulation whatsoever. Oh, I still have Mitchell Marner listed as a defenseman. Well, this is something. So what I'm going to do real quick is back out. I'm going to undo that change. Move myself to the first pick and hope we get the same two goalies, which, I mean, we should. This is one reason I don't really like doing those kinds of videos where I have to change players. Because I will simply just forget to change it back. And then there's always a video that has them as the change thing, or there's a 99 overall player. There's just something. There we go. He's back up to 90 overall. All right, take two. Here we go. This is the one. I can feel it. We're going to be all good this time. I know that Marner's the only player I changed. Okay, so we will go ahead and swap with the Golden Knights. I'm sorry, but the Golden Knights will not be getting McDavid. Instead, it will be the Toronto Maple Leafs who will be getting McDavid in the near future. Or so Leafs fans think. Vasilevsky, welcome to the team. And then we should hopefully still be able to get Sorokin. Yes, lovely. The thing that sucks is that we will not be getting John Carlson. He's gone. I don't know what team took him, but what a rat franchise. Now the question becomes, do I want to take Drew Doughty or do I want to take Taves? Because Taves is making 4.1. He does have two less abilities. Four years younger. Both two-way defenders. Wow. There is a pros and cons list of both of them. Let's go with Devin. Although he is right-handed, I'm taking Latang. It's probably about time I took a left-handed defenseman, so maybe we'll go with Darnell Nurse. Four abilities, two-way defender, and yeah, 9.2 is steep, but what can you do? I wonder who's even going to be left for forwards. You think we're going to get someone above 85? Probably not at this rate. Well, maybe. Ryan McDonough is locked and loaded. Five abilities right there. 85 overall, 6.7. A little steep. But whatever. It's a small price to pay for winning a championship. He is literally the only defender left. I pressed RT so many times. Not retweet. Right trigger. Nothing. So Spurgeon will be our penultimate defensive selection. And he's right-handed, so we need another lefty. I just like his contract. It kind of makes up for some of the other ones we took. Defensive defenseman, Ryan Graves. Hopefully he can shut it down. Six foot five, holy. Four-star physicality? Sign him up immediately. Matt Zuccarello is the best forward we can take. We have $32 million of cap space, so we burned through it with our defense and goaltenders. Uh-oh. So I am going to take Zuccarello at six million because he is one of two remaining players that are above 85 overall. Obviously, Brent Burns is there as well, but I am not going to take him. Although, didn't he start his career on forward and then he got moved back to defense? David Krejci, gonna be our first line center at 84 overall. I really have to watch our cap because, well, 25 million, but we still need a lot of players. Jordan Eberle will be our first line right winger. He's a sniper, so... Uh, Line might get some decent line chemistry and hopefully bury the puck. More jumped right out at me at 
I simply cannot say no. Gonna be our third right winger already. But at 2.5 million, Barabanov, a frequent draft pick on this channel, will once again find his way onto our squad. Another common pickup, Marcus Foligno joining the boys, and I may have to get Phil Kessel because 1.5 million is phenomenal for an 83 overall hot dog eating sniper. Come on down, Phil, on the price is wrong. Well, actually, the price is right because that contract, yes, please. We need five forwards and we have $10 million to do it. This is not going to be an easy task. You know what? I'm gonna money ball this thing. Who's got really good face-offs? All right, well, he has 91, but he's also $6 million. So that's a no. Luke Glendening has 90 face-offs and he is 1.5. That is extremely doable. Sign him up. Jay Beagle. What a legend. Washington Capitals alumni right here. It's actually not easy to find people with a high face-off rating, so Jay Beagle will be joining our team. He'll be our fourth line center at 77 overall. He can make it work. Also, why have I not been taking physicality? What's going on there? Five-star physical. He has 65 discipline. Not a big fan of all that. But, I, you know, how many minutes is he really going to get? All right, Nick. Let's see what you got. And now, just like that, we only have two picks remaining, and we have five million. So, Milan Lucic will also be joining your Winnipeg Jets. We have exactly two million, and I believe it's gotta be Stasny. Pretty sure he has 85 face-offs, and we need someone who can win draws. So, there's our team. Let's go see what they look like, and if there's any chemistry. Offensively, we're we're done for. There's no way that we're gonna have good chemistry there. I'm hoping for zeros, just not dash ones. Defensively, however, we should be golden. Yeah, literally hate that for us. It seems to be Matt's causing all the issues, so I'm gonna move him down to line two and we'll move Trevor Moore up. That's an easy solution. Oh yeah, now we're talking. Get a load of that. Plus two with Taves and Latang. Spurgeon and Nurse get a plus five, and then McDonough and Graves plus one. I could make that change and have a plus five plus three, but I'm not gonna. And in net, we have Andre Vasilevsky and Ilya Sorokin. So no matter who's in net, we're gonna be outstanding in that category anyway. We have one X factor on the entire team. Why do I for some reason feel like we're gonna be good? This could and likely will be miserably wrong, but I'm gonna say we make the playoffs with 44 wins and I will say that Latang leads the team with 70 points. We're not gonna get a lot of goals, but what we are gonna do is stop the other team from scoring. Hopefully. All right, Winnipeg, let's get out there and hopefully not get entirely dusted. That's a great way to start the season. I'll take a shootout loss all day. Uh-oh. No, we're good. 5-7-2. and two. Very not ideal. Uh, that's not English. So let's go ahead and pretend I didn't say that. It's really starting to shape up to be one of those we need to have a Cheeks division to make it in. But maybe we'll just blow up out of nowhere and do amazing. Definitely not looking good. Not at all. Oh? Can we? No, we cannot. But we have a 500, you know, in <laughs> wins and regulation losses. We apparently have Sorokin on the block, but I will not be getting rid of him. No shot. Here is the rest of the trade deadline. You know what? Even though it's a dash one, I'm going to go do best lines and see if it does anything. Because apparently the game knows best, you know? I'll make a plus five. And the game is like, oh, you didn't use best lines? That's sick. You're gonna suck. Have it your way, EA Sports. We'll put a dash one on the first line. Playoffs are still within reach, but certainly not likely. Especially with how many games we're still losing. We're gonna have to win a lot in these last two weeks. And I don't really foresee that happening. You know, the forecast is not projecting a playoff appearance. We were in fourth in the division, like right up till the end there. We actually finished fourth in the division with 85 points, 38 wins on the year. I mean, we were four points behind the stars, so it wasn't really that close, but I wonder in the wild card how close we were. Uh, still not very. The Edmonton Oilers had 88 points. Okay, so we just straight up were not that close. Like, kind of, you know? 
Three points isn't dramatic or anything, but it's also not one point. The Mighty Ducks of Anaheim take home the President's Trophy. Their team consists of Marcheseau, Petterson, and Kairou. Toffoli, Stephens... I... Nope, that's not his name. I have no idea where that came from. I apologize, Chandler, in advance. Anyway, their team does look good. I'll give them that. Matt Zuccarello doesn't even reach 60 and still led our team. Dash nine. There is a bunch of negative numbers here. There you go. Thank you, Barabanov. Look at Felino. Guy's a plus 12. What are you other clowns doing? Can't blame these guys. 27, 22, and 6. Three shutouts and a 920. 245. Sorokin, 916, 255. Maybe they got peppered. Is there a way to see how many shots they had against them? Because if so, I would like to compare that against the rest of the league. Is this it? SA shots against? It is. I do not see Vasilevsky, so maybe he didn't get peppered as hard as I thought. But it could also do with the amount of games that they split. No, even Carell, he only played two games less. And his shots are pretty close in the grand scheme of things. So no, I guess it was pretty average. Semyon Varlamov led with Ws. He played a tremendous amount of games. Three shutouts, 9-11 save percentage, 261. I see a 916 from Spencer Knight and a 915 from Jakey O. Let's see if he, no, he's still 86 overall. I don't know where I was headed. Ottinger, 88. Oh, sure. Just rub it in a little bit more. Why don't you? John Carlson leads defenseman with 73 points. And then we got a nice amount of points out of Drew Doughty, who I also could have taken, and Aaron Ekblad. Hamilton had 68, Rowan Yossi 65. I've had enough. Steven Stamkos gets the Art Ross with 105 points. One of only two players to get the 100 plus mark this year. Hatrick Kane, he also put up 57 goals, which looks like it is enough for the Rocket Richard. Matt Luff and Steven Stamkos tied for shorthanded goals. He had four shorthanded goals and 17 total points. What a mad lad. I should start looking at these things, you know. Try scouting out some players, but to be fair, look at Nick Delorier. He had three. Matt Savoie had an 80%. What is his... Okay, what's going on there? He must not have taken a lot of draws or something. Oh, yeah. Should maybe sort by this one right here. Face-offs taken. Zegris, oh, 2,587. We've got Krejci here, 53.4. And that was our first player in the list. What's his rating? 74 face-offs, so clearly that doesn't matter. Well, maybe it does, because his face-off winning percentage is only 45.8. So maybe he just took a lot more draws. Lindholm has 86 face-offs. He won 58.9, and he also took a ton. Barkley Goudreau led for hits with 232, and then Barkov is at number two with 206. All right, getting physical, I see. Fights. Felino. There it is. We led something. He had 16. Tanner had 15, and then Delorier had 13. My question is, where's Milan? And last but not least, the best plus minus goes to Jonathan Taves, who is 11 up on the next closest, which is Perron, his teammate. Wow. I'm guessing probably his line mate as well. All right, enough looking at stats. Let's go ahead. Sim the Winnipeg list playoffs. The Dallas Stars go on to win themselves a Stanley Cup. Let's go have a look, see where they finished in the league and what kind of team they were putting out on the ice. Oh, that's right. They were the team that finished four points ahead of us. Okay, so they probably didn't finish that high in the entire league. Let's have a look though. They had 89 points, so 14th. Yeah, you know, they're above middle. So I guess that's a positive. They had Skinner, Kopitar, and Timo Meyer, Troy Terry with Besser and Wheeler, Ross Colton, Eriksson Ek. Eriksson Ek on the third line center, Wowzers. They definitely stacked up down the middle, except for W. Johnston. I'm very sorry, but I have no idea who you are. Defensively, they got Sean Walker and Giordano, Lindell, Carlson, Copley, Hellebuck. That explains a bit. Well, I guess it turns out that defense does not win championships, at least not when I'm drafting the team, which doesn't really say much. There you go. Vazzy gets two trophies at least, so... We did our job defensively, but now we need to do the draft to see if offense is in fact the best defense. And by that, I simply just mean we're drafting forwards first and then defense and then goalies. So our goalie is not going to be very good. They'll probably still be all right, but we're not getting no Andre Vasilevsky. I'll tell you that for free. Here is your sweepless playoffs. Wow. All right. They all went to, is there even, okay, there is. A 4-1 right there. Is that the only five game series? Did they all go to six other than that? Cool, cool. On that note, 
I'll see you soon.